quantitative metric localization. In this method, there must be an a priori map with metric information. The robot then explores the world and uses sensors to extract features such as walls, halls, and doorways. The robot then performs matching to correspond features extracted with a location in the world. The robot then uses position estimation theory to determine the probability that it is in the correct location. Common filter localization. Common filter localization represents the robot's belief state using a single well-defined Gaussian probability density function. It uses a probability density representation of the robot position and scan matching for localization. Common filter localization uses raw sensor data to extract features such as lines as well as an initial position estimate. Next, there is an uncertainty associated with each line or robot orientation and position. It tracks the robot from a known position. Therefore, it is both precise and efficient. It can be used on continuous world representations. If robot uncertainty becomes too large and not unimodal, it can fail to capture the multitude of possible robot positions and can become irrevocably lost. Unlike Markov localization, it does not independently consider each possible robot pose. Common result from the Markov axioms if the robot's position uncertainty is assumed to be Gaussian. Common filter estimation of a new robot position is done by fusing the prediction of robot position in the magenta with the information gained by the measurements in the green. We get the updated estimate of the robot position, which is the red. This final pose estimate corresponds to the weighted sum of the pose estimates of each matching pair of observed and predicted features. Robot position estimation is based on odometry and observation positions. Topological localization. The robot is given an a priori map with locations of unique topological locations or landmarks in the world. These may be represented as nodes and edges with features in the world. The robot travels the world and recognizes distinctive places. The robot odometry and unique locations are used for the robot registration or localization. The fundamental issue that differentiates map-based localization from other types of localization is representation. Map representation, the robot's model of the world or environment is a map, and the level of fidelity of the map represents the environment. Belief representation means the robot's belief of its position on the map. Does the robot identify a single unique position? Does the robot describe its position in terms of a set of possible positions? And how are the multiple positions ranked? Bayes relies on evidence being represented by a probability function, and dempster schaefer theory represents evidence as a possibilistic belief function. This means that the function represents partial evidence. Dempster's rule of combination has a conflict metric that indicates when multiple observations disagree. One geometric approach is multi-hypothesis representation to identify the possible positions of a robot. In Markov localization, you represent the robot's belief by a probability distribution over a possible position and use Bayes' rules and convolution to update the belief whenever the robot senses or, senses or moves. In Gaussian, we represent the continuous hypothesis belief as a normal distribution. It's continuous and the position is bound by sensor data. Typically, you will end up with a single hypothesis pose estimate, which is lost when diverging. It's a compact representation and typically reasonable in processing power. You can also have a discrete hypothesis representation, which is bound by the resolution of discretization. Typically, multiple hypothesis pose estimate is never lost. When it diverges, it converges to another cell. An important memory and processing power is needed, which is not the case for topological maps. Multiple hypothesis representation has thousands of possible positions for a highly tessellated map. The advantages are the robot maintains a sense of position while explicitly annotating its own uncertainty about the position. 
Partial information from sensors and effectors can update the belief. The robot is able to explicitly measure its own degree of uncertainty regarding position. Some of the disadvantages are in decision making, how does the robot decide what to do next? Each position must have an associated probability and it can be computationally expensive. Markov localization on a topological map. Markov localization uses an explicitly defined probability distribution across all robot positions. Markov localization is the robot's belief state usually represented as a separate probability assignment for every possible pose on the map. A special case of probabilistic state estimation is applied to mobile robot localization, and this is what we will do in lab. It allows localization starting from any unknown position, and it recovers from an ambiguous situation because the robot can track multiple complete disparate possible solutions. It requires discrete representation of the space, such as a geometric grid or topological graph. We use a matrix in our software to do this in this class. It requires memory and computational power and can limit precision and map size. It is identical in abstraction and information to the environment map. And the decision involves assignments of nodes and connectivity between the nodes. Node boundaries are marked by doorways, hallways, and foyers. And know that there is no geometric information on the nodes. Here's an example of Markov localization. Notice at the start there's no knowledge and thus there's a uniform probability distribution across all possible locations. The robot begins to move and perceives the first pillar. Once it sees the first pillar, the probability of being at a pillar, one, two, or three is equal, which is why we have those three dis uniform distributions there. Now the robot moves again. The action model enables the estimate of the new probability based upon the previous one and the motion. Notice that the prior knowledge has the three probabilities as the same until the robot detects pillar two. At this point, since distance information is also encoded in an a priori map, once the robot encounters the second pillar, it can detect that it must have started at pillar one as opposed to pillar two because of the time it took to get there. The ability of a Markov localization system to localize the robot from an initially lost belief state is its key distinguishing feature. This is a challenge because of the dynamic nature of the environment. Notice that the final probability is very sharply defined because it is now unimodal as opposed to the multimodal possible decisions from before. Here's another example. The robot is placed somewhere in the environment and it is not told where. The robot queries its sensors and discovers that it is next to a door. So once again, it goes from a uniform position possibility of everywhere to the three probabilities next to a door. The robot then moves one meter forward to account for inherent noise and robot motion. The new belief is smoother and not quite as defined. However, when the robot queries its sensors again, it determines that it is next to a door. Since it's now next to the door and it has an a priori map that knows distance, it's now a very sharply defined possibility of being at the second door. Some of the challenges with this type of localization is that the robot tracks an infinite set of possible positions. Some of the advantages are given a unique belief there is no position ambiguity and it facilitates decision making at the robot's cognitive level, for example, path planning. Some of the disadvantages are that robot motion induces uncertainty due to effector and sensor noise and forcing the position update to always generate a single hypothesis of position is challenging. Localization challenges. Sometimes knowing the absolute position is not sufficient. Localization may also be required on a relative scale with respect to humans. Cognition may require more than position. It may need to build an environmental map to plan a path to a goal. And the estim estimation process is indirect. Measurements are noisy. Measurements may not be available all the time. And also frame of reference is important. If it's local or relative, where am I versus where was I? And if it's global versus absolute, where am I relative to the world frame? Locate 
Location can be specified in two ways, either geometric, such as distances and angles, or topological, such as connections among landmarks. More challenges are that perception, sensors, and motion control effectors play an integral part and in role in localization. And as we know, we have sensor noise, sensor aliasing, effector noise, and that odometric position is based upon estimation. And this concludes today's lecture on localization. Have an awesome robot-tastic day!